Welcome to Texas Connect, everyone. Hopefully we are here to stay for the next little while <laughs> and we don't all get kicked out again. If you all would take a moment and make sure that you're, you are muted so that hopefully we don't have any interruptions, we'd appreciate that. So we want you to note that this session is being recorded and all breakout sessions will be recorded so that they can be watched on demand later. So this is our second annual session of Texas Connect sponsored by Roots Tech International, or sorry, Family Search International as part of Roots Tech 2022. We're very happy to have you join us. Today we have a number of individuals who will be presenting projects of historical and genealogical interest here in Texas. We're going to hear a very short introduction from each of these presenters. And at the end of all the introductions, the presenters will move into their own breakout room where they can make a full presentation to any visitors who come and go. So I'll get us started off. My name is Summer Owens. I don't have my own breakout room today, but I am the coordinator for this event this year. So I've been trying to recruit people to come and present. Uh, the genealogy bug bit me when I was 14 and I've been doing it ever since. So over 25 years now, um, I specialize in US and internet research. If it's on the web somewhere, I will find it. <laughs> I love, I love research so much. I'm also passionate about preservation. I run a blog called All Bound Together where I, I scan and I post antique photos and ephemera and I do digital restoration on, on them and put them on different genealogy websites for others to find. So that's a little bit about me. Let's start with the intros. Stephanie Bennett, let's go to you. Good morning, everyone. I'm so excited to be here. Um, my name is Stephanie Bennett. I am the manager of the Genealogy and History Division at the Dallas Public Library. Um, we have a wonderful transcription project going on um, with City of Dallas permit books that I'm excited to be able to tell y'all a little bit more about. Um, we are looking for volunteers, so if this sounds right up your alley, um, please come to our breakout room and I can tell you more about it. Thank you so much for having me, and I'm excited to talk with you all. Thank you, Stephanie. Let's move on to Jessica Baber. All right. Well, I'm Jessica Baber. I'm the museum manager at the Mansfield Historical Museum and the Manhouse Museum in Mansfield. Um, both museums are operated by the city of Mansfield. In December of 2020, uh, we opened a new museum, the Manhouse Museum, after about 18 months of doing research and uh, acquiring artifacts and um, of course, pretty extensive restoration on the house itself, uh, which was originally the house built in 1865 um, of the town's founder um, and one of the namesakes of Mansfield, Ralph Mann. And so I'm just gonna talk very briefly about that process of kind of opening the new museum uh, as well as talking about some volunteer opportunities that we have both in person and some ongoing research um, that we're trying to do and can use some help with. Um, and then I'm also going to talk a little bit about a research library that we have at the Mansfield Historical Museum that's maintained by the local historical society that has some really excellent resources that I want to make sure that people are aware of. So I hope you guys have a chance to, to come and listen in. Thank you, Jessica. Shelby Rowan. Good morning. I'm Shelby Rowan, the president of Texas Research Ramblers Genealogical Society. And we're in Bryan College Station. I have about 100 members, 40 some of which are pretty active. 
And if you come to my breakup room, I want to tell you, breakout room, <laughs> I want to tell you a little bit more about who we are, just briefly, but also to tell you that because of Zoom and, you know, the blessing of COVID, uh, we've had some fantastic speakers. I want to tell you about that. But then I want to share a little bit about our programs that are coming up. We have some great speakers. We've had speakers from London and California and Oregon and uh, just great speakers. And uh, so come and let's talk about that. And I want to tell you how you could be a part of Texas Research Ramblers, either on Zoom or if you're in the area to come to our meetings. So thank you. Looking forward to talking to you. Thank you, Shelby. Natalie Franz. Hello, my name is Natalie Franz. I'm the Assistant Director of the Texas Freedom Colonies Project. Um, we're an education and social justice statewide project focusing on Texas's freedom colonies, which are um, settlements founded by the recently emancipated um, African Americans in Texas. Um, if you're interested in learning more about the project, uh, we both want to be a resource for you all who are researching um, ancestors, and also you can contribute to our project. Um, so come, come on by and learn more. And I'm joined today by uh, excellent independent researcher and volunteer, Gloria Smith. Thank you, Natalie and Gloria. Rachel Altman. All right, good morning. I'm uh, with Carnegie. I am trying to find where I can share my screen. Oh, no, don't share your screen yet. Just uh, give the little intro. Oh, great. Okay. Good morning, everyone. I'm sorry, I keep looking at the wrong things. And I um, am so happy to be here despite my cranky face <laughs> with my IT problems. I am Rachel with the Carnegie History Center in Bryan, and that is near Texas A&M University. We are a repository for archival documents, as well as a genealogical research center. And all of that is free to the public. I always say that you can be from Iowa, Indonesia, or Ireland, and come in and do your research at no cost to you. And um, we're just really happy to be here this morning. I'll be talking a little bit about what Family Search is doing at our repository here in a tick. Thank you so much, Rachel. We're glad you made it back in. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's just fine. All right, Angie Zufelt. Hi, I am just a local volunteer. I don't have a big organization, but a bunch of us, actually Carrie Ann was our leader. She um, started a program where we take family search into the adult lifelong learning program at our local community college. And we teach the class twice a year. For six weeks, it's all volunteer run, and it's just helping the general public learn how to do their family search or family research. And we use family search. So come and find out how you might take what you have to offer and give it to the community and share and teach more people. Thank you, Angie. All right, we've got Professor Moore next. Hi, I'm Dwayne Moore. Um, I'm a history professor at Prairie View A&M University. Um, about a year ago, um, I started working with different faculty and staff on campus to uh, write grants so that we can move forward a lot of archival projects at the university. We have um, a host of very rich collections about African-American history, uh, not only in the local area, but also in East Texas. Um, and the Digital PV Panther Project is a, uh, is a project to hire students uh, and get the community involved with the processing and digitization of the collections so that they can be disseminated broadly um, you know, to, uh, to, to the larger public, um, basically to get those collections uh, viewed and so that we can um, sort of eliminate the silencing of African American history. Um, we, I've also won a grant from the Summerlee Foundation to do a, um, a complete study of the enslaved cemetery that's on the backside of campus. Um, there was a study done there a little while ago. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm excited to be here. I'm working with a couple of people involved in this project uh, on the Digital PV Panther Project. And um, thank you for inviting me. Thank you. Uh, Anne, Anne Metter. Ah. 
Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Ann Metter. It says Charlotte, but don't believe it. It's really Ann. Um, I'm a retired professor from Sam Houston University. And about uh, two years ago, we started something called a History Task Force here in, in the Montgomery County. We do Montgomery County, Grimes County, Walker County, part of San Jacinto, uh, all this area that was the original Montgomery County. And we specialize in doing uh, research on African-American communities and families. And we got lots of interesting projects going on. And we're gonna be talking about those in our little virtual room 110 here in a little bit. But we welcome all you to come and ask questions and we'll tell you what we're working on. Hope to see you soon. Thank you, Ann. Christopher Schmink. Hi, I'm uh, Chris Schmink. I'm the foreigner here. We're in Columbus, Georgia. Uh, <laughs> I manage the Family History Center in Columbus, Georgia. Several years ago, our local genealogical society uh, asked me how our local library could become a family search affiliate library. Honestly, I knew very little about family search affiliate libraries. I researched it, uh, got back to them. I said, hey, why don't we go together and talk to the director and see what we can do? We went to our local, fam uh, local public library and explained what a family search affiliate library was, what it could do for the community and what it could do for the library itself. And ever since we've had a phenomenal partnership with our local public library, which turned out to be four counties and seven branches, not just what we thought was the local library. If you don't know what a family search affiliate library is and you want better access to all those records that it says you can't see at home, you can only see them in a family history center, you definitely want to come to the Family Search Affiliate Library presentation and help your local library become one. Uh, we'll talk more about that in the breakout room. Thanks much. Look forward to the opportunities. Thank you. All right, Michael Bauer. Hi. Uh, my wife and I are, we're going to be doing a breakout room on camera capture teams and basically explain what they are, how they work, what kind of records we get and that sort of thing. My wife and I are in a camera capture team right now, plus we support four or five others. See you in the breakout room. Thank you. Kelvin Myers. Kelvin, did you make it back in? All right, we might come back to Kelvin. Um, Don Gehring, can we have Don here? Yeah, I need to unmute, sorry. Uh, <laughs> welcome, uh, I'm excited to be here today. I'm managing a, a project here in Texas for Family Search. We uh, have a number of uh, records throughout all the counties uh, in Texas where the initial indexing uh, left out a lot of important information that helps in researching our families. And our project is to fill in the blanks, add the additional information and uh, make those families that we're looking for more searchable. We'd love to tell you more about it and show you how your families in, the, in, the, in Texas can be uh, found and, and helped by uh, this project that we're working on. So join us in our breakout room. Thank you, Don. All right, we have Anna Kramer. Hi there, my name is Anna Kramer and I manage the Texas Digital Newspaper Program out of the University of North Texas Libraries. Hosted on the portal to Texas history, this is the largest single state open access digital collection of newspapers in the country. Um, the only thing that beats us is the Library of Congress and they cheat because they host all 50 states rather than just one state. Feel free to visit my room and learn a little more about working with the digital newspaper collection. Thank you so much. That's a resource I've definitely used in my research. Um, we have Tommy Cheney or Cheney. Hello, can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, uh, Tommy Cheney from Conroe, Texas. I'm involved in a project where uh, about four or five years ago, uh, a three and a half acre little plot of land back in the wilderness of Conroe was found which contained uh, now over 200 graves of African-Americans. Most of them were 
uh, buried back in the days uh, when slavery was here in the Conroe area. And it's been a, a wonderful project. So I'm gonna tell everybody about how we found it, uh, what we did to get it uh, turned into an actual project, made into a historical site, and what we're doing to actually identify the people that are in there. Uh, we have over 200 people in there now. So it's really a, a neat project. So I look forward to telling everybody about it. Oh, thank you. All right, we've got James Prince and Stephanie Sparkman. Hi, this is uh, James Prince. Me and my uh, uh, colleague, Stephanie Sparkman, we helped to uh, coordinate efforts to find additional records in Texas to be added to Family Search, and we will talk about that in detail in our breakout room. Great, thank you. All right, Michael Walker. Hello, I'm Michael. My wife and I are the directors, or we're the super, we lead a family history center in Klein, Texas, or Houston, Texas. And uh, we live in a world of modern technology where you can do ancestry, family search, find my past. You can do any of those things from home or from the comforts. I can do them in the doctor's office on my, on my iPhone. So the thought is why come to a family history center and what's in a family history center? So my presentation today is gonna to be on why come to a family history center and what kind of things you can expect when you go to a family history center other than the normal sitting at a computer and seeing records that you can only see in a family history center. Um, and I just wanna make another comment uh, as I'm listening to all the synopsis of everyone speaking, I wanna attend all of these classes. So all of them are taped and these class, these uh, breakout rooms are designed, you can jump in and out. So don't think you have to choose between each of them. You're allowed to come in and out of all of them. Thanks. Thank you, Michael. All right, let me make sure we're, okay. We've got Bessie Jackson, is she on here? Yes, I'm here. Okay. My name is Bessie Jackson. I am in Marble Falls, Texas, and we are working on a uh, African American museum because of lack of representation. We have worked with the cemetery because their uh, LCRA moved graves from Spicewood and just dumped them in Marble Falls, and we have no idea who they are. So we're working on that project, and uh, we're trying to raise money to uh, build a museum so we can have some history and some follow through. So if you visit us in the room, we'll get to give you more information. Thank you so much, Bessie. All right, Joanne McDougall. Hi, <clears throat> I'm Joanne McDougall. I'm with the Llano, Historic Llano County Historical Museum. Uh, last February, Chris came in, Chris Richards came in to see if we would be interested in having some digitizing done here at the museum. And we were very happy to see her because we had tried to get some done before. And she and I worked out, um, as, uh, worked with a group of ladies that she's had up here. And it has gone wonderfully well for the museum. We, they went through a lot of pictures that we had and uh, are helping to get them on our website. So we appreciate so much the work that's being done. And I will see you in a little while. Thank you, Joanne. It looks like Kelvin Myers has joined us. So maybe we can scroll back to his slide. Are you here, Kelvin? Yes, I'm here. Great. Uh, okay. I, I belong to First Methodist Church. We are working on digitizing a lot of our membership records, our church newspapers, uh, the records of Trinity Methodist Church, which combined with First Methodist in about 1916. And uh, we've had a lot of enjoyment doing this, and we'll be uh, talking in a little bit. Thank you so much, Kelvin. We're glad you were able to get back in. All right, and then we have Scott Fitzgerald. Oh, uh, this I'm Scott Fitzgerald. I'm from Tyler, Texas. I guess are y'all hearing me? I can't really tell, but um, we are. Okay, um, 
I'm vice president of the Smith County Historical Society. Uh, we are running, um, we are the archives for Smith County, Texas and the museum. Um, I'm gonna have a PowerPoint that kind of explains our mission and where we're going and what we're doing right now. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, did we have Alan Rabe join us by chance? Carrie Ann, do you know? I haven't seen him. Okay, well, thank you so much for all your introductions. For those of us that have just joined us, we've just finished introductions. We have various breakout rooms where each of these organizations will be giving their presentation on what they are doing. So you are free to hop in and out of the breakout rooms. These presenters have prepared to be able to give their information over and over to whoever comes in. So you can try to visit all of them if you want over the next um, hour and a half or so. I think the meeting will close at 11 CST sharp, right, Carrie Ann? Correct. So, so we can all move to breakout rooms now. Um, know that all of these will be recorded and they will be put on Texas Connect YouTube channel.